Hello and welcome to this fifth video on developing web applications with ASP.NET 4.5 and the Web Forms paradigm. Today I'd like to continue looking at data binding and strongly typed data binding that we started out in video number four and I'd like to show you a couple of more things we can do with data binding to expand the interface that we've already added. So to do this I'm going to jump back into my development environment <clears throat> And compared with last time, I have modified and augmented the solution a little bit to contain two more pages. And these are the products page. So this contains a product listing and the product details page, which contains the details of a specific product. So let's have a quick look at these pages before running them. Um, as you can see, the products page contains a grid view and the grid view contains a couple of bound fields that will display the name, short description, price, units in stock. Um, and then we have a hyperlink field which will actually go ahead and uh, redirect to the product details page to see details on the particular product. And it will have its text set to view details. And if we go into the product details page, we see that we have I've added a form view control. And this form view control actually contains an item template. And the item template, what it does is it uses eval statements to display details on the particular product. So let's format this a little bit. And then let's um, start running the solution. Let me just show you also that I've added in the product uh, page. I've added a method in the code behind, which uh, is called get products and which calls the DB products uh, property of the context model. And the product details page just has a get product method, which calls the products uh, property of the context object and then does a find of the ID, which is a parameter uh, recovered from the query string passed into the page. So if I run this, I should be able to see the same results as last time for the categories. Now I will be able to see the products listings. And as you can see, I currently have two products in my database. Um, one is a uh, light helicopter and another is a light airplane. So if I click on the view details, I can actually go ahead and see the details for this uh, particular product using the form view. And you see that I've passed in the query string ID um, to the page so that the get product method can recover it and pass it to the product context object. So what I'd like to do now is to augment this sample a little bit. Um, and let me just show you a limitation of the um, older way of doing data binding. Because when we were doing data binding in ASP.NET, we were using eval or bind statements to, bi to evaluate a parameter um, of type string to uh, some property of the object um, passed in at runtime. So it's very easy to do this name one and now if I go ahead and I compile my sample nice click on the build you'll see that the build succeeded however if I try to run this page let's go back to the categories page and run that and then click on a category details you see that I immediately get a uh, data binding exception stating that there is no property with name one. However, the solution compiled perfectly because the binding is done at runtime and there is no type, in, no uh, explicit type checking done on the binding uh, expressions. So to work around this with strongly typed data binding, we can re replace the eval statements with something else. And let's try typing in item dot. And you can see that Visual Studio is actually bringing up the uh, strongly typed properties of a toy category object because it now knows via the item type uh, attribute that's been passed up here that it's going to be binding to a toy category object. So now I can say item dot name and it's actually going to return the string name corresponding to the uh, name property of the object. So now I can go in here and I can do the same thing and I can type in item dot uh, short description. Let's just put a space in there for clarity. And I can do the same here and type in item dot description. And I can also 
do something which is neat. I can say item dot last update and since last updated is a date time I can actually do a two uh, long date string to actually get the date when the item the category was updated and then let's just put in a, a, a dash and do another statement and then another data binding statement and put in the time so we can do item dot last data last updated to short time string so I am actually retrieving the date time value and passing and formatting it in two different ways to show uh, the update of the category. Now I'm also going to modify the category um, ASPX, so the category listings page, to remove this eval statement from here which takes evaluates the category ID string to a property and then takes the value of that property and appends it to this string and this is one place where you can very easily make mistakes so let's just remove this and replace it with the new uh, with the new item syntax so this would actually become item dot um, category ID so this would return the integer that corresponds to category ID and I just have to do a string concatenation saying uh, I want this to point to category details dot ASPX question mark ID equals plus item dot category ID and now the string is going to be built out of the integer that represents the category ID and the uh, static string which is category details ASPX question mark ID equals. So I'm going to do the same thing for the products um, listings page first. So I'm going to replace this long uh, two parameter eval statement with something simpler. So I can just type in item dot uh, and here it would be product ID and I want this to go to the products details page. So let's just type in that in product product details dot ASPX question mark ID equals plus item dot product ID and let's get rid of the bracket the trading bracket and now I am actually comp uh, strongly data binding to the product ID and uh, constructing a query string out of it the other neat thing I can do in the products uh, details page is I can replace all of the evals with uh, item so I can say item dot name again but what I'd like to do is I'd like to also show the category name for this particular product so let's go ahead and see how how we would do that so remember that when we built out the um, let's put a break before that the and before the strong tag here okay so that's better uh, and indented <clears throat> so let's say that we want to show the category name for this product as well so let's just type this in as product category name and then remember that the product uh, entity object has a property which is of type category which will return the toy category object to which this product belongs to so we can just go dot category dot name and this will actually tell Entity Framework to build out a SQL statement that will also retrieve the name corresponding to the category in which this product is located. So now we can show the description. Item dot description. And we can also show the price. So this is actually item dot price the available units which is item dot available unit uh, units in stock and obviously we can do the same thing we did with um, the date time in the category object so item dot last updated dot too long date time string And then I'm just going to put a dash in here and do a second eval statement of the same thing. Item dot last updated dot to short time string. 
So two different ways of formatting the same date time object. So if we go ahead and we run all of these again, let's go ahead and run this up in Internet Explorer, what you will see happening is that in the categories uh, page there will not be any uh, changes visually and the strings will still show as category details SPX ID equals 1 or ID equals 2. However, the strings are now constructed through strongly typed data binding so that I don't have the possibility of making runtime error uh, errors occur. So if I click on the view details, I see the uh, category details and note that now my date is nicely formatted so that I know it was last I did updated on Saturday, November 10th at 11.04 p.m. And if I look at the products listings uh, page and I go into the view details, you will see, and actually I need to add another space in here, so let's just do that really quickly so that it looks nicely. <coughs> So we need to add one more brick in here. There we go. And let's just rerun that. So you can see now that I also am able to display, display the product category name, which is model helicopters, although I am binding to a, an object of type product. And of course, I am also displaying the nicely formatted date as well. In the next video, what we will be seeing is how to implement updating, uh, inserting and deletion with strongly typed model data binding.